little star K1, pearl 2 K1, K1, pearl 2, repeat from little star, finishing K1. I wonder you didn't start on something for yourself. Like the shawl of mine. Oh. I would never be up with anything as big as that. Besides, a girl who is getting married ought to practice making things smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like looking well ahead. A beautiful gentleman. Trust your father for finding you the right husband. Hmm. It's a pity Adolphe doesn't like you. He knocked the frame over twice yesterday. Oh. You must learn to respect your elder. <laughs> Hello, my child. Hello, Father. Ma. Well, well, this is a domestic scene. Getting used to sitting over to the husband, eh? I ought to get used to looking at him. And loving him. <laughs> He's very nice. I like people who are not angry when they have to wait outside shops and places. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I am going to look as well. I'm afraid it isn't for you any longer. Oh. When a girl's engaged, she doesn't give presents to other men. You couldn't wear it at the bank anyway. No. No, I couldn't. The other men give presents to you. Oh. Horse of not much value. But dude, we gave it to uh, Elizabeth of Austria. He didn't make her very happy. No, but I don't care for jewels as jewels. They must have a history. I want you to be always happy. Hmm. What about having the wedding soon? But you said next year. Is anything the matter? Oh, rubbish, no. I just want to see you settled. Oh, I'll settle just as nicely next year. Hm. What's the hurry? Suppose you and I go and dine somewhere tonight. Hm? And leave our guests to look after themselves? Sure, I'd forgotten. Spend the day with me tomorrow, then. Doing what? Well, we could go down to Zwiney and have a look at the new lodge. Do you really want to see it? No. I want to talk to you. Is it a bet? It's a bet. The Baron de Beaufort. Ah, Philippe. Hello. Hello, Philippe. And Monsieur Terrard is here, sir. An excellent excuse for me to leave you two together. Oh, I'm taking her out. Oh, you are not? I have an appointment with my dressmaker. The one appointment a woman never breaks. Not even for me. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect a man to declare his love through the door of a fitting room. And you have a thousand frocks. What more can you want? Want to knit him. Open your chest. Oh, is that for me? Mm -hmm. I am going to be the sort of wife who needs for her husband. I wish you'd be the sort of fiancé who'd come for a drive. Oh, I might do that, as far as my dressmaker. Hmm, you spoil me. <laughs> come, get your hat. Yes. Who was at the back of the swindle? I've been trying to answer that question day and night for the last three weeks. Yes, you look as if you needed some sleep. I boiled it down to six probable starters. But these men will never risk imprisonment for fraud, if you've that much evidence. I haven't, it's only suspicion. Men of that kind seldom leave evidence lying about. Well, what do you mean to do? Go down with the ship if I can't keep it afloat. I may be a fool, but no worse. If there is anything worse than a fool. Is Brogard one of the men you suspect? Brogard? I'm writing tonight to Monsieur Marquet, regent of the Bank of France. In that letter will be six names. Until the charges I'm bringing against them can be substantiated, I can tell you no more. But I shan't rest until the buyers of those bonds have been repaid to the last franc. How will this affect Rani's marriage? Now, that's been troubling me most. She was to have had a large dowry. I wrote to Philippe to tell him the truth, but if the news leaked out, there's bound to be a panic. But you can trust him, surely, while you're trusting him with what you value most. Things like this undermine one's faith. Yes, but he's a man of wealth, integrity. He may be able to help. You're right. I'll walk round to his apartment later on. Well, I'll see you tonight. Tonight? Oh, yes. i quite forgotten. We're dancing. No. Oh! You have 
captain. What? My dressmaker. He's getting further away with Sagan. Dressmaker. You and I, my dear, are bound for distant shores. I am not. I shall get out the next stop. <laughs> there won't be any. In two hours' time, you'll be sitting beside a babbling brook, eating trout by the light of an old Chinese lantern. Don't be absurd. I have a hundred guests coming for a dance. What of it? I wouldn't let you dance with any of them. You are mine and nothing shall part you. What's the other, boy? You wait. Oh, just a moment, please. Oh, I take it all back. There's every excuse. Oh, it was nice of you not to get killed. Yes, it was, wasn't it, when there's so much worth living for? I do hope it wasn't a car you cared for. I loved it like an only child. Oh, you always ask careless with the things you are fond of? Oh, who, me? Yeah, you're the man I want to talk to. Look what you've done to my lights. Your lights, my foot, my door. But it was all your fault. And how can you tell with that butterfly nettle over your head? Oh, next time they let you out alone, you should stick to taxi. Goodbye, Philippe. Hey, where are you going? Oh, to my dressmaker. Don't you two boys argue too long. He has to get a fancy dress for my dance tonight. Bye. Now, wait a minute. It's... Who is she? Say, I'm terribly sorry about all no, this. No, I mean the girl. Mademoiselle Racine, my fiancé. Men like you are a menace. Do you know that? Hey, haven't you got mixed up a little bit about the cause of this quarrel? I'll ask you, gentlemen, if your names and addresses. Why, certainly. Record. Monsieur? Is the Baron at home? No, Monsieur, and he hasn't returned since you telephoned. Eh? It is Monsieur Broga, is it not? What did you say? Monsieur Broga. No. It is not. Good day. Who shall I say called? What was his name? Whose? The one whose car you smashed. Oh, Carl Paul de Bray. Oh. He was funny. You should have heard what he said after you'd gone. I wonder who needed this proverb. Oh, I forgot to ask that. Uh, that pattern would have looked nice on the one I am making for you. I like mine the way it is. You'll be making me jealous. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Hello. Gerard. Lucky fellow, Philip Manto. A breath of fresh air. Yes. <laughs> Playing truant, Rassi. Are you a friend of Brogard? Brogard? No. Who is that? Come Have you seen your father? He usually dines at his club and comes along late when there is a dance. Oh, that's all right. You are worried about him. So am I. He has been strange lately, hasn't he? Has he? All right, you clever. Have you ever heard of Paul de Brac? Never. Neither had I until a minute ago. Monsieur. How'd you do? No, don't bother. I'll announce myself. Monsieur's invitation card? I gave it to Albert. Edouard, monsieur. Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Me? Who oh, come down to earth? That's the wildest guess I ever heard. So I hoped. And then you lied when I asked if Bogart were a friend of yours. The man you meet in business is not a friend. No need to ask the nature of that business. I'm sending your name in with the rest. Hello, De Brack. I thought you were still in America negotiating that foreign loan. Shh. Don't tell a soul. I've returned. On another secret mission? No, on the Normandy. I didn't know you were a friend of the Racines. Well, I'm not. Yet. Would it be indiscreet to ask whether you've heard something? No, but I'll let you into a secret. I've seen something. Anything to do with some rather shaky bonds? Oh, bonds. You know, Cardinal, for one awful moment, I thought you said blondes. <laughs> <laughs> Brogard and these others are some of the biggest men in France. And the toughest. It would be suicide to pose that letter. I'm fighting to save hundreds of people from ruin. It isn't a one-man job. Listen, you are much smarter than we gave you credit for. And there is room for a smart man in any circle. Forget that letter. You have my word, everything will be all right. 
For who? For you. You're asking me to come in on the other side. I'm cutting you in on the winning side. No? No. Then why come out in the open? Isn't it obvious? Ronnie, huh? Is anybody else in on this? No one. The Regent will receive that letter at Lyon tomorrow morning. I had to give you a chance to clear yourself. Thanks, a million. I take it. Didn't you know that it's dreadfully rude to get trash? Oh, no. No, I was brought up all wrong. You know, the lad has never been given a chance. The lad doesn't seem afraid to take one. How would it be if you had yourself thrown out? Well, personally, I'm against it. Tell me, have you ever heard of sirens? I've listened to them in folks. Oh, no, I mean the ones that drive around in large foreign cars and lure motorists to their doom. Oh, I see. You came to apologize for getting in the way. Oh, no, no, I came because I couldn't stay away. Now, look, is it a fact that you're going to marry this sap to Beaufort? What is sap? Sap. Sap is a man who doesn't look where he's going. And that kind can get you in an awful lot of trouble. You talk like an American. Oh, that's just when I get excited. You see, my mother was three times removed from the Statue of Liberty. Well, look who's here. Well, hello. <laughs> Feeling none the worse, I hope. For what? I thought you might be suffering from shock. <laughs> Very sympathetic fellow, isn't he? <laughs> nice invitation cards, weren't they? I suggested he should throw himself out. I hope he refused. No, I just came to inquire of Mademoiselle after the accident. That's very proper. Nothing I like better than old world courtesy. But you didn't lose much time, did you? Well, I had none to lose. I'm leaving for the south of France tonight. Really? Now, that's a relief. <laughs> My dear, the least you can do for him is to dance him off the premises. Shall I? Well, come on. He suggested it. This much I do ask. Don't send me an invitation to the wedding. Oh, I should never have thought of it. Goodbye. Bye. What is it? Mademoiselle. American over there in the tweed suit. Where? Over there, with the police. How should I know? Terrible. You mean the suicide? No, this coffee. You can't get a decent cup outside the United States. A good reason to go back there. Listen, sweetheart, I'll go when I've picked up the killer I'm looking for. Why waste your time here? Because he had a habit of presiding over other people's suicide. Haven't you got enough killers without importing them? Sure, but you've got a nice little chair waiting for him to sit on. You won't find him in one of those chairs. Racine shot himself. Listen, a guy doesn't use a maximum silencer to blow out his own brains. The police wouldn't even let me ring up my broker. Mm, there'll be a panic on the bus tomorrow. I agree with you. Endless. The doctors are convinced it's a case of suicide. I regret having detained you so long. Good night. Voila. Ah. Tell Mademoiselle I will call tomorrow. Very good. No, my dear. Get away. We once agreed. Financial trouble, I suppose. 
Yeah, I thought as much. That's often the way in these cases. Yeah. Well, then... It's suicide. My father would never have done that. Never. You hear what the doctor says, Nancy? What he guesses. Against what I know. Just how much do you know? Only this afternoon. He asked me to spend tomorrow with him. When I agreed, he said it was a bet. Your father was the sort of man who kept a bet? Of course. He has been murdered. And you do nothing. You let everybody go. When one of them must have done it. Did do it. Yes. What's all that for? I was thinking that if my father made a bet, he'd keep it. And one registered letter from Paris. Sign, please. It must be a rare responsibility to be the secretary to the regent of the Bank of France. <laughs> Good morning. Well? My wife and I have a few francs. I was wondering if Monsieur could suggest a safe investment. Monsieur will forgive my asking. Willingly. <laughs> Good morning. Wait here. Come in. Got it? Hmm? That registered letter. You know, all this is very irregular. Come on, let me have it. It's not as easy as all that. You telephone at midnight and ask me to intercept the Regent's private correspondence. <laughs> very serious thing to do. Must have a reason. Brogard pays you to do as you're told, not to ask reasons. Brogard? So he's in this? Never mind that. That letter mustn't get into the wrong hands. Oh. Oh, I see. I won't be a minute. Five minutes till the gentleman in the next room that I was called away. Yes, sir. Remember, five minutes. Yes, sir. They are shopping. Seems hard. Not for other people. The world's going on just the same. Well, it will for you presently. Will it? Of course. What are all those people doing outside Father's Bank? Are they people who have lost their money? How awful. I never thought of them. But he would have. You don't believe Father shot himself, do you? The police have closed the case. Yet he said he'd never rest until those poor devils had been paid back. But how if the money was gone? He'd been swindled. There were six men he suspected. He said he was sending their names to the regent of the Bank of France. Then one of those men must have killed him. But that letter, if ever it was written, never arrived. But somebody stole it. Just as ever reason to think so. If it were found, could we get the money? I imagine it's a document they'd pay very handsomely to keep in their own hands. Who are they? Well, your father wouldn't tell me. But when I mentioned Monsieur Brogard, he didn't say I was wrong. Brogard? 
Where can I find him? He follows the sun. He has a yacht, Nice, Monte Carlo. But I shouldn't attempt to find him. You'd be dealing with very clever men. Hello. I didn't like to come before. Oh, what a pity. If you had, I would have asked you to take me to that brook, to eat proud by the light of an old Chinese lantern, and forget. Queer you remembering that. Is it? After all, we were going to get married. You want to break our engagement? <laughs> That's what you are here for, isn't it? Well. Well. I've saved you a lot of trouble. Anyway, I have no time for marrying now. I have more important things to do. What? I'm going on where the police left off. Now, wouldn't it be better to try and forget what happened? Yes, for the man who shot my father. But I am not made that way. Goodbye. Goodbye. I never saw such a house. All these auctioneers, men labeling all the furniture. You never know where you're going to find them. Oh, Mark. Do we know a nice man with a 38-inch chest? No, I'm very sorry, but the Regent is sick and tired of police inquiries over this Racine disaster. Yes, he must be, but I don't happen to be a policeman. Not? Not. Well, what then? Well, my job's a little hard to define. I hold a roving commission from the government to inquire into private financial enterprise. Oh, is that so? Yes, and this is actually so, too. The government is going to get rid of those clever gentlemen who pattern themselves on Stavisky. Their activities have been a little too lively of late. Well, what do you expect the Regent to do? The letter from Racine never arrived. Or if it did, it vanished in Duval's pocket. At any rate, it's gone. As far as I can see, our hopes of identifying these men have gone with it. Not altogether. The Regent has his finger on the pulse of every private banking account in France, right? Now, if he could give me information of any man whose credit has substantially increased during the last few weeks from no apparent outside source, wouldn't that be a help? That's an uncommonly bright idea. Is it your own? It's all mine. So what about it? I'll see what he says and let you know. Where can I find you? Shark fishing. Uh, in Monte Carlo. You can come to the upholstered rocking chair. 170. Any advance on 170? Going for 170. 170. Any advance on 170? 170. 170. 170. 175. 175. Going 175. 175 francs. Now then, gentlemen. 175 francs only. Going at 175 francs. 175 francs. Going for the first, second, third, and last time. That gentleman over there. But they are giving things away. Oh, don't stay here, dear. It'll only upset you. Lot 106. A pair of seed pearl earrings said to have belonged to a Grand Duchess. Now then, gentlemen, what am I bid? 250. 250. Thank you, sir. 250. Come along, gentlemen. Some of you, I think, might find a use for them. Or I'm no judge of character. 300. 300. Thank you, sir. In advance on 300. 350. 350. Thank you, sir. He's headful. That is not the way to sell. Going at 350 francs. Stop! Yeah. You don't know what you are doing. What you are missing, you don't understand. Give those earrings to me. You can't buy history for a few hundred francs. Really? This is most irregular. I tell you, no price would be too great for things like these. Mademoiselle so shares her father's view that money should be had for nothing. Will whoever said that stand up and say it to me? Surely you won't refuse a lady. Oh. It was you. Yes, and I stand by it. I shall keep out of business, mademoiselle. One crook's enough in any family. I suppose you think the money from this sale is coming to me. You are wrong. Every penny will be paid to the people who lost when my father's bank went smash. That's as may be. Because he emptied their pockets, there's no reason for us to refill them by buying things for more than they're worth. More than they're worth? <laughs> Dirk Chani, I've told you. They belong to a grand duchess. But there is more to them than that. She was condemned to be shot. While she was in prison, one of the guards was good to her. There was little enough he could do, but he brought her a pot of faded flowers and a half-used piece of soap. It was not much, 
But in a place like that, it make a difference. Just before they took her out to face a firing party, she gave him the... They are my tears of gratitude, she said. How are you going to offer 350 francs for jewels with that story behind them? 3,000. 3,500. 4,000. 4,000. 5,000. 6,000. 7,000. This was in Marie Antoinette's room. 150. 175. 150. 400. 500. 600. 700. 800. We'll make it more. 1,000 francs. They are not jewels you are buying, but Romance, drama, bits of great people's lives. 300 francs, 400, 500, 600, 700, 2,000. Never saw anything like it. Remarkable. You must be tired. Are you too tired to spare me a moment? No. Mademoiselle. All my life has been concerned in salesmanship. What I have just seen convinces me that I know nothing whatever about it. But it was all true. And I had to get that money. And you got five times as much as anybody expected. It would be unnecessary to ask if you were in earnest about the repayment to those depositors. Of course I am. Rather a tall order. But even if they got only a little, it would be something. At your present rate, a great deal. I wonder if you would be good enough to call on me tomorrow. There's a business proposition I would like to make to you. I'll come. It is a very generous offer, but how can I help? Jewels like these must be easy to sell. What a woman most desires is generally around the neck of another woman. So, you want me to wear them for you? What if I should meet any of my friends? They would not recognize you. You would not appear as Mademoiselle Racine, but as an Indian princess, a Spanish Marquesa. It is easier to play a part with a suitable maker. What would I have to do? Let us suppose you are a refugee from Spain. Everything lost except your jewels. We visit casinos in the south of France. Casinos? Yes. You gamble. You lose. What are you to do? Sell your jewels to repay your losses. I'll do it, monsieur. On one condition, there's a person I am looking for. If I should find him, you will... Release you from your contract at once. I agree. Good. Now, this is the set I want you to wear. I flatter myself that only an expert would know their limitations. But you said it was an honest business. I could not allow you to go about in casinos wearing millions of francs worth of precious stones. Now, these are genuine. You can't mistake them. Look. There is a distinguishing mark. I only ask you to wear the others. These are the ones I hope we shall sell. I'm sorry. When do we start? How long will it take you to become the Marquesa de Villabos? Oh, senor, I am the Marquesa de Villabos. to me of Spain. When I think of my lovely home in Madrid, knocked out, blown up, bombed, yes. Bombed. Coffee, monsieur. Sure. Did you make that call? Yes, monsieur. Have you read about this poison drama? Yes, miss. Well, you're responsible for that too, aren't you? A dangerous fellow. <laughs> One, madame. We are so full, madame. But uh, this gentleman has almost finished. Gracias. The waiter will be here immediately. Gracias. A bottle of Chablis. Yes, madam. Puzzling document of foreign wine lists, don't you find? Si, si. 
Although I must say, I never fell for any of your Spanish amontillados, if that's the word. Is it? I'm asking you. I suppose it is. Sure. You're having a hard time out there. Oh, horrible. Terrible. I suppose you were mixed in it yourself, huh? Espana. When I think of my lovely home in Madrid, bombed, yes. Bombed. Why not forget it? Thought it'd be easy. Okay. What do you mean? There's your soup. Moving. That black headdress looks swell, but I prefer you without the castanets, Miss Racine. Oh. If you are such a good detective, why didn't you find out who shot my... It wasn't my job. Besides, the police closed the case on a verdict of suicide. But I haven't. I'm going to find the man who did it. All right, let's get together. I'm looking for a guy myself. A killer who beat it out of the States. What was he like? City Hall hasn't even as much as a fingerprint on the case. Then how can you hope to find him? Well, we know his racket. He always works with shady financial groups, bumping off the opposition in big business deals. That's why I dropped in when your father was killed. I don't care for anything more. A pigeon, madame. Very nice with little carrots. Nothing, thank you. Do you know a man named Brogal? What makes you ask that? You do know him? Sure, he's the kind of a guy that I cultivate professionally when I'm incognito. Then you can help me. I want to meet him. Oh, hence the senorita stuff, huh? It's one of the reasons. Well, looking the way you do, I shouldn't think you'd need much help. <coughs> what have you got on Brogal? Nothing yet. He didn't come to your dance. I don't even know him by sight. The guests were all good friends? Yes. Folks you've known for a long time? Yes. Why? What are you thinking? Well, it would have been something to work on. It had been some strangers there. Help me to meet Brogal. Duval was the last man on earth to ever cross us. You trusted him yourself, Brogard. Ufot was mad to let him out of his sight. What time did he say he would be here? I'm worried, gentlemen. I can't afford to stop in France with things as they are in Brazil. I can't afford to. Of course, the last thing I want is to leave you in an emergency, but, well, a man's family must come first. Of course, I'd come back if there should be any trouble. Sit down. The gentleman, sir. Mm. You didn't find him? Not a trace since he gave me the slip at Lyon. We are disappointed in you. Oh, you are. I don't see any bars on the windows. But that letter is still in the wrong hands. And what have the rest of you done to get it back? Where you were sitting here playing fiddlesticks, I've had 20 men scouring France for Duval. As I do, you should cultivate patience. There is only one man who will tell us where Duval may be found. Who? Duval himself. When he considers that the time is ripe, we shall hear from him. Ripe for what? Extortion. Like a wise man, he's playing on our nerves. So my advice to you is to go home and wait. Good day. If I'd known Duval would play a trick like that... Pity you've got no sense outside your trigger finger. Get out! Deuxième tableau. Huit, huit, deux à la banque. Sorry, de Bracken. Well, you had to make it up to me some other way. Let me in on one of those promotions of yours. Find me a place. Okay. You know the idea? Lose. Not too much or we'll find half the profits gone. Good luck then. Or rather, bad luck. Thank you. Table's full. Your man is taking the bank. 
Trois, baccarat et cinq à la banque. Would you like some fresh air before you meet him? No. Come on. All right. Carl. No. Hello, big shot. Why, it isn't the playboy. Going to join us? No, your game is a bit too hot for me. But I've got a friend who'd like to cut in. Marquesa, I want you to meet Mr. Brogard. This is the Marquesa de Villalba. Mucho gusto, senor. I am very happy. Miss Mooch. Excuse me. Say to the board. Going to play? There is no place. Oh, the Marquesa can have my place. Oh, the senor is too kind. Please. Muchas gracias. More peaceful here than Spain. Please, do not speak to me of that. Always I try to forget. Oh, but it's your fair. I must be careful not to lose too much. Oh, my dear, that diamond necklace, I'd sell my soul for it. It's worth a great deal more than that, my dear. Always in the spring, I'm with my father on the yacht. But now... Captured? No, bond. But for my jewels, I lose everything. Oh, too bad. Are you uh, fond of the sea? Oh, me and can. You must get Jimmy to bring you along sometime. Take a look at my yacht. Dernier coup de la taille. Cap, please. C'est à la bonne. Neuf pour madame et cinq. Look, nine. I win. Oh, what a shame. For you. Whew. Can't stand much more of this. I think I'll get myself a highball. It's a funny word for a Frenchman to use. But a funny race. Oh. Say, who's that guy? Paul Debrat. Nice person. Oh, this I get? It wouldn't last long if you draw on a seven. No? Oh, gracias. I shall remember. No, madame. The tie is finished. The ring's finished. Oh. Is it over? For the moment. And I don't lose? Not this time. Oh, you're not leaving. Mm. I'll be back. Hey, boy. Come here. I'm sorry, I won. Never mind. Better luck next time. No, not that one. No, don't look among the empties. All I know is that Jack and Charlie's had a big black crow on the label. Black crow, sir? I've never heard of it. Well, it doesn't matter. Just give me some ordinary scotch and soap. Mrs. Condat, please. Oh. Oh. You were so kind to give your situation... Uh, no. Your place to a stranger. Oh, well, there's a lot of the old Hidalgo in me. Oh, please. Yeah, Hidalgo, they were the grandees of Spain, but I don't have to tell you that. No, you don't. What is that you drink? That is a very old Marsala. It looks like whiskey and soda. Well, you should never go by appearances. You look like a real Spanish Marquesa. But why not? You are a great friend of Mr. Brogard, yes? No, just a casino acquaintance. Now, tell me, does the name Rane Racine suggest anything to you? Por qué? Oh, is she a Spanish girl? She used not to be. You're not by any chance suffering from loss of memory, are you? Oh, please, do speak very, very simply. Oh, I do not understand. Well, uh, for example, did you have a bad motor accident and wake up and find you were somebody quite different? Don't speak to me of accidents. You see, I am in the car when we escaped from Granada. And then the bomb drops. The bomb drops? Yes. It's terrible. <sighs> well, I give it up, but I could have sworn you were one and the same person. Oh, I see. You mistake me for someone else. It's funny. For the loveliest girl in all the world, and I've only seen half her face. Santa Maria. And what happened with the other half? Always behind a mask or under a butterfly net, but I feel as though I've known her all my life. She made a great impression. That's why I can't take my eyes off you. How long are you going to be in Monte Carlo? While the money lasts. It won't be long if you go on playing that game. Then I must fall back on my security. Wouldn't that be a pity? Do you go about giving advice to strange women? <laughs> no, but I can't look on you like that. When can we meet again? For okay. Do you think I do instead of her? A large cup of black coffee, Charlie. Oh. Hey, you certainly made the grade with that hippopotamus, Marquesa. He's asked us to cruise along to Cannes in his yacht. Ah. Oh. You wouldn't do that. Por qué no? Nothing I should like better. You must find a new senorita. Oh, don't you believe it? He asked me to, but I refused. I shall go straight away now and accept that invitation. 
You got yourself a new guardian angel? He has seen me before. He nearly organized me. Oh, an old friend of the family, sir. <laughs> Not exactly. I helped to smash his car. He was too dizzy to remember your face? Oh, he did see me again, but I was wearing a mask. Hey, wait a minute. Was it at the dance? Yes. Did he have an invitation? Well, he... Well, what do you know about that? They are starting again at the big table, madame. Thank you. to me. Back again? I've got it. That skyline. Didn't it remind you of something? What? The dear old California coast as you see it from Catalina Island. No. Oh. Maybe you didn't get as far west as California. Look, can't you find somebody else to have these hometown talks with? Say, what's biting you? Oh, nothing. A butterfly and a slug were sitting side by side. Oh. No, we shall not talk of me, but of you. How have you become such a big man? Oh, too fond of the good things of life, I expect. No. No, I mean the great, successful businessman. Well, hard work's the only way I know. And brains. You pull a string here, a string there, and things happen. Mm, used to, perhaps. But I made my pile. Oh, it is thrilling, the big business. Poof. And a government falls. Through the people? No. The big businessman. Perhaps a bank goes crash. Oh, I'm sorry. I talk so much that you burn your finger. It's nothing, really. You exaggerate our powers. All this businessman wants to do is to sit in the sun and look at beautiful things. A radiogram, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me a minute. You won't run away. Mm -hmm. You seem to have enjoyed your talk. Mucho, mucho. I did. It was most instructive. Sit down. In that chair? Oh, we'll go for a walk. Why do you look so black? I do not like the company you keep. Would not the girl with happy face be polite to her host? She wouldn't be seen dead with him. I think we are very disloyal to that girl. Why? Who walk about holding my arm. Oh. So you're holding my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please, please. You turn my whole world upside down, do you know that? Oh, I am in love with her. I knew I had a life sentence the first time we met. Then you came along. And you forgot all about her? No, it's not like that. Have you ever flown a kite and seen the darn thing plunging about on the end of the string? Well, it's like that with me. All up in the air? Yes, I'm too dizzy to know what it's all about. At least I did know whose hand held the string. Now I don't even know that. You see, the moment I set eyes on you, I was in love all over again. And it felt like the same love. Oh, I must be going nuts. Why not go on loving both of us? One of us in only a dream. And like a dream, we'll disappear.
Send this at once. Very good, sir. have a telephone at sea. Oh, we're not at sea. We're at moorings. I have a shoreline plugged in. Oh, you big businessman. Why don't we go to the casino? Nothing much happens there before midnight. But it's more amusing. Let's start. Well, I have an appointment at 10.30, but you go on ahead. Of course not. I'll wait for you. Hello. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Now, don't tell me now. I'll give the region to call later on. Right, I'll remember the number. Goodbye. This is a quiet sort of a way of spending an evening at Cannes. Well, you've got your call. No bad news, I hope. No, no, thank you. Would you fancy a stroll along the crevette, as they call it? I would not, and that is not what they call it. How do you call that game? Fiddlesticks. You nearly always lose. Sometimes you win. Mm. That's what makes the game worth playing. I have a little headache. Perhaps I'll lie down before we go to the casino. Do you think you ought to play tonight? I'm sure I ought. You wouldn't rather sit on deck? No. I don't know about you, but I have a sort of a thing in my throat, and I think a drink would cure it. Why don't you go and find out? Well, wouldn't you like to try a similar experiment? No. Oh, be a pal. Look, don't you ever get tired of my company? This is a funny way of lying down. Oh, it's you. Listen, you're getting stuck on Paul de Bracker. Now, nah, don't burn up. I can't help liking the guy myself. Only I've got a hunch he's a phony. He isn't. Okay, but don't tell me that I didn't tip you off. Jimmy. Hmm? That is Monsieur Bogart's cabin just below. Yeah. Well, sure. Sure, right under our very feet. I want you to do something. Drop a rope from here to the water. That's a big idea. Oh, never mind. Do it. Okay, you're the boss. Oh, my goodness. You gave the quite a start to sending the matter. What time is it? Getting on for half past ten. Ma, you know the saloon. Wait at the bottom of the stairs. And when Monsieur Bogart leaves it, come and tell me. But what for? Don't ask questions. Go. Oh. In our cabin, resting. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Whatever next? Did you see him? Yes. He came down the stairs and went along the corridor. What are you doing? Duval's writing, all right. There's no doubt about that. And he hasn't been afraid to ask plenty. Oh, why not? Duval has the makings of a businessman. It's obvious he won't be staying in this Pringles hotel. Too many people in England would know him. That means that whoever we send to get the letter will receive a message from Duval giving him a rendezvous. With your peculiar talents, you may be able to settle with him in another way. But I'm afraid we shall have to pay up. I 
We'll have a plane standing by. Right. Oh, my dear. What is going on here tonight? Oh, there you are. You were waiting to start. Oh, I'm sorry I shall be able to join you. It's some unexpected business. Marquesa, she was winning thousands, but now they're stripping her of everything. Si c'est la banque, ne pas la banque, la banque gagne. Oh, why don't you stop? You don't lose everything. That would be nothing new. Il y a 20 000 francs à la banque. Qui fait le banco? Uncle. Sweeby. No. Oh, please, go away. I've never seen such a tragic face. She ought to be stopped. Give me a cigarette, Bobby. The banco Sweeby is demanded. Then we find out. Shall I? I will. Eight. Eight. Nine. But I have only four million left. No. Madame will catch a check at the caisse. But I have no money, no bank, nothing. But it is forbidden, absolutely forbidden, Madame. Appelez-moi le chef de service. Madame, you see. Madame should not have played. Oh, very well. She can have these two. Now, may I make a suggestion? This lady's jewels are worth a great deal more than she's lost. I am a diamond broker. If you'll allow me to sell these jewels, Madame, I feel sure everyone will be satisfied. Monsieur Devine is a very well-known gentleman. Madame will be quite safe to leave the matter in his hands. Do what you please. I'm finished. Bring your stuff around to my hotel. We might do business. One minute. Surely I have first call. Why won't you let me help? Help me? Oh, that's funny. And who has a better right? Oh, please do. Let me alone. Now, look, I don't know what's come over you, but whether you like it or not, I'm on your side. Please don't do anything silly. luggage in a car, and I've booked rooms at Pringles Hotel on the River Thames. There's a flying boat leaving Nice before dawn. Can you make it? Very well. I also doped out that jigsaw puzzle that you rescued from the sea. I'll give you the answer in the plane, huh? Okay, sir. I'll bring the car around on the park. Magnificent. You were inspired. Was I? Here are the copies. I have the originals here. I don't like freaks about when I'm doing business. You shall have your share in the morning. Send it to my father's bank. I'm leaving for England tonight. I shall hate parting with them. Now, how do you spell the name? As it sounds. I'd love to be there when you rap on the door and give them back. It won't be as easy as that. Devine says that she's sailing for England tonight. Your father? Certainly. You must have it badly to haul me out of bed at this time of night and pay me such a profit. I have. Then make out the check for the amount I paid Devine and... Look on the rest as a wedding present. Oh, I can't let you do that. Yes, go on, do as I say. Lovers like you are scarce nowadays. 
You can send me a little piece of the cake. I'll send you the whole darn thing. <laughs> Secretary. Then Duval stole the letter and wants to sell it to Brogard and the others. Well, that's how I figured it out. Whoever they sent to England will be there to buy it back. Yeah. Say, are you sure you didn't see the guy that was in the cabin with Brogard? I could only see Brogard. You didn't recognize the other man's voice? He did not speak. Hmm. You'll have to think up a new disguise, Marquesa. I have a hunch that the messenger will be somebody that we both know. Reservations. Yes, Mr. Rain. I have a tie up with Scotland Yard in the Paris Sûreté. The young lady over there is Miss Racine, but for personal reasons, she's passing as the Rani of Kalnai, okay? You see. I just didn't want to get into trouble with the register. Put what you like, Mr. Rain. Thanks. I'd go straight to bed. I won't be sleeping much tonight. I'm sure you're as white as a sheet underneath all that paint. I never did hold with all this play acting. You're going to wear these tonight? No. Curls. Marquesa de Villabos, you're sure she's not here? Certain, sir. This way, sir. I booked by telephone from the airport at Nice. Any messages for me? No, sir. Room 17. I made a mistake. Took him in next door where the Indian lady is. She must have been delighted to see you. Is your name De Beaufort? No, why do you ask? The initials on the bag.
to stay outside. Is your name de Beaufort? Yes. You can have the letter if you bring the money. Who sent you? Name of Duval. Is he here? He's got a houseboat up the river. Name of Sweet Lucy. Ah, Sweet Lucy. What time? Ten o'clock tonight. But no firearms. I'll be there. Anything coming to the messenger? Plenty, if he doesn't get out. A very important Indian princess. Is that so? Mud. Oh, my goodness. Fancy you knowing it was me. Still, I dare say it won't matter if it's only you. Look, just exactly what are you two doing dressed up like a couple of Bombay ducks? Well, I've never rightly got to the bottom of it, but it's something to do with this jewelry business. You don't look under her. You've seen me. She'd be properly upset. Don't bother. I won't. He may have got the letter already. I'll pull him in on suspicion. But we don't know that he has it. There are ways of making a guard talk. They open right up after a punch in the nose. No, please wait. This is my job as much as yours. You may have another one. Those jewels, they've been stolen. But does it matter? Doesn't she understand? Hey, who was it you mistook me for? No one. Couldn't wait, was that it? Oh no, we'll settle this without any help from outside. No, I'll take those no. two. Oh, oh you. There are no words for you. If any hard words are wanted, I'll use them. Perhaps you can explain why you take these from my room tonight and I found them here. I'd hate to explain why they're here. I'd hate anybody to know the kind of fool I've been. But this much is certain. You've seen the last of them and me. But they are common glass, rotten and worthless as you are. No, cut it out. I'm not likely to fall for another big emotional act, Marquesa. Oh. Why do you call me that? I'll show you why. Oh, no. No! 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 Stand still. No! Oh, let me... Oh, no, 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 no! You described yourself as a dreamer. No, let me... Here's where you wake up. Rani Racine. I could have staked my life that you were on the level. You are a thief and murderer. And you dare to make love to me? I wish I were dead. I tried and tried to believe in you. In spite of what I knew must be true. Because I wanted to believe in you. You made me hate myself. Oh, talk some sense. Wasn't what you came here for enough? Did you have to sneak into a hotel bedroom and steal my jewels as well? What is all this? Six men were responsible for ruining my father's bank. But there was only one stranger in our house the night that... You gone crazy? Lying won't help you. 
I was listening about the pothole. The night brigade gave you orders to come here and get the letter. And I saw you leaving the cabin arm in arm. Go on, shoot me. Would be glad to be out of a world where I care for anything like you. <laughs> I've got it. And he was in your room. Is there a duplicate set to these jewels? Oh, what does it matter? It doesn't matter, except I picked this lot up in Cannes for the sweetest person in the world. Now, don't worry, darling. I'll get them back for you, and I'll find out a lot of other things, too. I'll be right back. Now I've forgotten something. Man, I brought up my luggage. Where can I find it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, down the road, sir. Brook Cottage. Brook Cottage. No. No. Fine evening. Huh? Beautiful, river weather. Say, what's become of all the houseboats along this reach? Kind of gone out, houseboats have. <laughs> there ain't none of them left except old sweet Lucy. And a proper rat she is. <laughs> yeah. That's not all I want from you. who the man is. No, he isn't the one. I know he isn't. Oh, I'm not talking about him. Come on. Come on. I've got a motorboat ready. Come on. Quick. That you, Bofo? Yes. Just a minute. Give me that letter. Who are you? Look who's here. Oh, it's a small world. Go on. Well, give it to me. Well, there's nothing I like better than old world courtesy. Well, I've got something you like a great deal less. Be a good boy, or you'll get what I gave Racine. Sit down. You got the money? Yes, but give me the letter first. Five million francs. No less. <laughs> Mustn't be put out because I'm careful. <laughs> now, suppose we count those notes before I hand over. Nothing would suit me better.
Don't let Beaufort get away. He didn't get away. Did he get the letter? He did and he burned it, so all this is for nothing. I have to call up New York. See you at the hotel. at all. I'm just offering you the choice of two evils. After all, I have got the letter. Have the police seen it? Well, not yet. And unless you and your friends give back the money you stole from Racine's bank, they will. It will be impossible to refuse any request of yours. All right, then. Tomorrow night, dinner at the Ritz. Okay? That, which translated means he gives twice or gives in time. <laughs> Gentlemen, you'll just hate what I'm going to tell you. such unwelcome notoriety. I admire your discretion. Well, I think you'll find them quite in order. I'm sure of it. And now, if I might have the letter, our business is concluded. There it is. As it is obvious that you would never have burnt this, I can only suppose that I have been taken for a ride. I'm afraid you have. I congratulate you. No, congratulate the author of the idea. Here she is now. Mademoiselle Racine, Monsieur Brogard. And the Marquesa de Villabas, Mr. Boga. Senor. Mademoiselle, modesty compels me to withdraw from such distinguished company. I can only ask you to believe how much I regret any pain I may have caused. Both you charming ladies. Of the premises to it. Do you know the words? Yeah. You know, I've got a swell idea. Let's ankle up the aisle. What? Ankle up the aisle? Oh, we'll do it up in style. We'll have lots of pretty bridesmaids, but it's the bride that I'll adore. Oh, that is a swell idea. You should have mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> 